Hey y'all, this is Belle and this is the Belle Perspective. I am back with another video. This one is going to be about a new book that I am reading and I really want to share with you all and encourage you to get it so that we can talk about it here live. So, uh, the book is called The Love Songs of W.E.B. Dubois. I like calling it Dubois. I like calling him Dubois because it makes me sound like I'm fancy and I possibly speak French when I don't. But most people call it Du Bois, but it's the love songs of uh, W.E.B. Dubois or Du Bois. Um, the author is named Honoré Fene Jeffers, and I'm actually going to show you the book. And I do want to read like at least a quick excerpt just so you can kind of get an idea of the author's style. This is what the book it looks like. And I'm gonna pop it up on the screen, uh, screen here in just a second. Um, here, again, it's called The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois and it's by Honoré Fene Jeffers. Um, I absolutely love this book. It's 790 page, pages, you guys. So it's like super intense. But it, as soon as you open up the book, it draws you in. It, it, you forget that it's that many pages and you just consume it. You consume it. Um, it is that good. Again, the author's name's Honoré, Honoré Fene, Honoré Fene Jeffers. And uh, the book came out probably about, oh gosh, I don't know, a couple months ago. Oprah announced it on her, uh, on CBS Morning News as being a part of her uh, book club. And oh my gosh, Oprah chooses a lot of really great books. I know she suggested ta Coates' The Water Dancer, which was also his first novel. That book was excellent, 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 excellent. So it's on par with, with that. Um, she actually won an NAACP Image Award for this book. Um, it is just phenomenally written. I, one of the reasons why I love uh, reading so much is because you can, you can read and imagine what things look like in your mind. And, you know, you can watch a movie, you can watch a show, and things like that but it never seems as grand as grand or as grandiose as the images that you imagine um and so that's one of the reasons why i really enjoy reading and i also enjoy reading the book first before i like watch it on tv or watch the movie or anything like that because a lot of times what i imagine in my mind is much grander than what they present in you know hollywood if with if it's an adaptation Anywho, so I'm encouraging you to grab the book. Um, it basically, and again, I'm just kind of going, I'm looking down because I'm looking at my notes. I actually need to figure out how I'm going to put it up here so I can stop looking down. But, you know, that's that's another struggle for another day. So she currently, actually as of, as of September of last year, she is in talks with Shonda Land about her book. Now y'all know Shonda Rhimes. Shonda Rhimes is behind Grey's Anatomy, which I loved. I fell off uh, Grey's Anatomy because it was way too many episodes, but Grey's Anatomy, How to Get Away with Murder, which I absolutely love. Um, Bridgerton, like she's behind some really great shows and really great writing and really great content so we'll see if it becomes a tv show or a movie or something like that you know two black women putting some things together that that would be amazing um she says she'll never write a book like this again and honore is she's written other works but they're not novels it's poetry is what she typically writes that's what she's typically um comfortable with is writing poetry and so um she decided that she was gonna start writing a novel and it just kind of picked up on its own and uh i really really enjoyed what she talked about with her process but we'll get into that so the book is uh about a girl named ailey Ailey Pearl Garfield is spelled A-I-L-E-Y Pearl Garfield and it talks about all the ancestors that took part in creating her. 
So the Matismo, I think is how you pronounce it. Those people, Creek people is what they're called. The Africans that were shipped over, the way they intermingled, all of the different elements, all of the different ancestors that created Ailey Pearl Garfield. And then Ailey Pearl Garfield's life and her family interaction um, and where her placement in, in the in in the circle of life and all of that. So it pre it's a very detailed account. And it talks about a Ailey's ancestors and her people. Um, and it spans all the way from uh, pre-colonization um, to the horrors of Jim Crow. Um, and it tackles childhood sexual abuse, colorism, and so many different, so many other things. And it's just such a well-written book. It's just such a well-written book. Such a well-written book. Um, I'm asking myself this out loud so that I can answer it. What do I love most about this book? What I love most about this book is that she has such an uncanny talent. Like the way she writes is so descriptive, it's so intense, it's so precise. Um, it's historically accurate. She had to do a number, just years upon years of historical research to make this historically accurate. It's just such a great body of work. Um, it's compelling. It's just, it's intense. It's funny. It's refreshing. It's, it's such a great book. Such a great book. So I, I really encourage you. Again, I'm going to post the picture here. The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois, Du Bois, uh, by Honoré, um, Honoré Fanay Jeffers. She's, she's, chef's kiss chef's kiss um just a couple things from the from the article before i read a, a quick excerpt um from the book and um so in the cbs morning news interview that she did this is where oprah announced that she was going to have her a part of the book club which was pretty cool she didn't even think that oprah really was calling her so oprah literally literally had to like say no i am oprah winfrey this is not a prank i'm you're going to be a part of my book club um, she talks about her writing process and I almost started to cry because I felt like, I don't know, um, I'm a dreamer. I dream, my dreams are very, uh, they're almost like movies. Sometimes I wake up and I'll have a whole movie in my, my mind of different things that may have happened. Sometimes they're prophetic, sometimes I see things and... It typically it happens or I, I, I'm, I'm a dreamer and so sometimes you, you feel kind of awkward like no one else does that that's kind of weird whatever she started writing this book right started writing this book and she would go to sleep and she would wake up in her dreams she would be visited by these different black women different completely totally different black women and she didn't understand what they were saying to her and so as she was writing the book, she realized that these were Ailey's, who was the main character of the story that she's writing about. They're Ailey's ancestors. Isn't that amazing? So what she did was gather all the names of the people. And she, you know, she just created this in her mind of all the people that were visiting her in her dreams, created storylines for them, created an ancestral track for them, made it all fit together, right? And made sure that it was historically accurate, tied them all together so that they could fit to be Ailey, Pearl, Garfield, the main characters, ancestors, and where they all came from, their storylines, their backgrounds, their mothers and fathers, their grandfathers, their uncles, their aunts, and everything that influenced them to become and and, and that molded their, their world in order to produce Ailey, Pearl, Garfield all the way down centuries later. What a beautiful process. She dreamed about it. Isn't that amazing? Oh, and she said that they just, these were black women just kept visiting her in her dreams, different women. Um, and it was just such a beautiful process and such a beautiful way to describe it. Oh God, it was just, it was awesome. It was awesome. So um, she, again, she is mainly a poet. She's not really a novelist, but, uh, <clears throat> and one thing she says, poetry is her prayers. And it makes sense because that she is a poet because the way she writes, it's, it's, I mean, extremely poetic. Like that's, 
that's the the theme throughout the book it's it's poetic the way she writes um but not over poetic where it's like uh really i'm gonna read a page or two so that you can kind of get an idea of what i'm talking about because i really want to encourage you to go get the book so we can talk about it i want to talk about it. i want to go live i want to do some book club stuff talk about it find some other books discuss it and really kind of grow from this and you know determine some things that we can we can talk about and and, and take it from there Anyway, so she says poetry to her is prayer. She wakes up in the morning and she has language in her mind and in her heart. And it is part of her prayer. And so I'm just like, wow, how amazing is that? To be able to take the spiritual and tie it in with a historical aspect and be able to create a book that's historically ac accurate, that's, that is satisfying the spiritual um, uh the spiritual requirement i guess i won't even say the requirement but the spiritual side because i do believe in ancestors and i do believe that the ancestors do come speak to us in in more ways than one um and so for her to be able to do that was is just phenomenal so i encourage you to go get the book go read it yes it's 790 pages but i mean immediately once you pick up page one you're gonna be on page 300 in no time you'll you will get there it's an amazing book um <clears throat> yeah a, amazing book so before i end this live i did want to go ahead and read something real quick i won't like read the whole book obviously 790 pages i ain't trying to sit up here and read all day but as i read more i'm gonna read up to probably page 400 take a break and then discuss it with my book club and then i will you know keep trying to make videos to talk about it and hopefully if more people you know get in the comments and tell me that they bought the book and want to talk about it we can go live or I can create some more videos reading the book to you all whatever we decide so anyway um again Honore Fene Jeffers we really miss Jeffers we appreciate you writing this we appreciate the labor of love this is an amazing book and I'm going to make it my point to my duty to let people know worldwide about this book. She said that it was a love letter to black women, black women that look like myself, Viola Davis, Whoopi Goldberg, you know, black women, unambiguously black women and Oprah's in the world. And so this this book is a love letter to you all. Anyone can read it. You don't have to be a black woman. You don't have to be black and you don't have to be a black woman. But it is a love letter, an open love letter to black women who are unambiguously black and, and, and you know, that, that don't necessarily align with the, the typical standard of beauty, but are all beauty, beautiful in their own right. And so this is a beautiful love letter. And I encourage you to get this book, The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois by Honoré Fene Jeffers. So I'm going to start. Um, I am not, I'm going to just pick. I like the period times, like I, I because the book switches between historical and also like the, uh, the now. And I like the historical part the most. So I'm going to pick a part from here. This is talking about her like great, 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 the, the village becomes a farm, is what it says. So 20 years has passed and a new century had begun. Since Nyla had given Miko his first cow, much has changed in the village and in the people's land near the Oconee River. More white men along, their, along with their wives and children have pushed further west, bringing their ways of collecting days on paper instead of recording moons. There were many small battles between the Creek people and the whites, for they had brought cattle and pigs with them, which trampled the land and they too killed too many deer. Bushy hair had inherited the tendencies of the Komorodi uh, panther, and though he had st stiffened in age, when young men from the village began to fight the white men, the children and grandchildren of Englishmen and Scotch Scotsmen, Bushy hair was filled with red courage and rode into battle. He died in one of these fights and his name was sung with grief and gratitude. Yet battle was different when it, when it occurred on paper and in, and in assaults on, on the mind. 
The white men, the Americans, wanted everything and did not respect the ways of the people. Even those who represented themselves as friend encouraged domestication among Creek men. That they should farm the land instead of letting women do it. The most annoying were the Christian missionaries who intruded at odd, who intruded at odd times to advocate baptism and the romantic practice of the man on top instead of, a, instead of on the bottom or from behind. They insisted that anyone civilized knew the latter two were unholy and moreover encouraged the uh, rheumatism. After his uncle died, Miko felt more confusion, especially when the elders of the place in the middle of the tall trees decided to combine their village with another. Nyla begged her son to move with her, but, for his, but his desire for property, a hankering he had inherited from his father, became stronger, and his father was a white man. He wanted to make his own way and it pleased him after that the villagers left, he could walk the land and, and knew that he owned it all. As he had in his childhood, he whispered to himself, mine, mine. This was land Miko could give to his children after his death, a legacy for he had married as a, a legacy for he had married as a young man. Miko and his wife, Mahala, had two sons and a third son had twin sons and a third son. Each had American names as Mahala had insisted. Then when Miko thought that Mahala had gone through the change for she had stopped her intervals in the moon house, the only creek way she followed, Mahala had become pregnant and gave birth to a little girl. Her mother named her Eliza, but her father called her Lady. Mahala was a mestizo, the daughter and granddaughter of mixed blooded children of white men who had mated with creeks. Mahala's skin was very pale, her hair light brown, and her eyes blue instead of brown. She had met Miko at the trading post near family's home by the Oconee River. Mahala's family had father had impressed upon her his own ways. The woman should obey their husbands. And after Mah Miko and Mahala married in a tiny Christian church near the trading post, she had moved her belongings to his village and his house instead of Miko following his wife as a proper Creek man did. In fact, Mahala did not even speak the language of the people. Her parents had forbidden it in their home. And when Miko spoke to their children in his dialect, he had taught them. They responded in kind. Mahala grew petulant. She accused her husband and children of making fun of her and insecurity made more potent when they laughed in her, at her in reply. Mahala was ambitious for her husband. And at this biannual journeys, and at their bi biannual journeys at the trading post, she urged him to buy another cow as well as a couple of pigs. These trips allowed her not only to visit with her parents, but but to covet the lifestyle of the whites. In addition to livestock, Mahala began to bother Miko to purchase slaves. Though his wife was unaware of his Negro blood, he was sensitive about the idea. He had, he had seen slaves before, naturally, though they had been Creek. The village had, they had kept people in bondage because of a re revenge trade in the aftermath of a murderer or when captives were taken in war, yet buying a person who had not committed any wrong or whose clan or village had not transgressed did not sit well with Miko. Still, his wife pushed him, and one summer, when a slave trader found his way up, up the path to Miko's farm, he pushed, he paused to speak to the man. Uh, I'm not going to keep reading. I'm going to stop here. Um, he ended up purchasing uh, an enslaved person. I could keep reading. This is, this is uh, Ailey. Ailey Pearl Garfield's great, 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 great grandfather. And it talks about how he lived his life and just the way she wrote, the way she writes is just amazing. Anyway, so I encourage you to get the book, um, The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois, Du Bois, Du Bois by Honoré Fene Jeffers. I encourage you to get the book. It's on Oprah's book club list. Um... Anyway, and we'll talk about it down in the comments. I hope you grab the book. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And uh, my name is Belle. This is The Belle Perspective. And I will see you again soon. Peace.
Thank you.